Thanks for the invitation to be here and share the 11D style guide generator. I, I put a lot of time and attention into it, so I'm, I'm glad to be able to kind of dive into the internals of it a little bit, show you how it works. So let's dive right in. First up, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Steve Woodson, pronouns are he, him. I'm a web developer based in Chicago, Illinois. I've been a dev for, gosh, over 20 years, and I loved that standards aligned terminology. Benny, I think I'm going to use that because uh, that's that's kind of how I define my whole career, I, I would say. Um, so you can find me online. My website is stephenwoodson.com. I'm also on LinkedIn and Mastodon mostly uh, in terms of like social platforms. So find me there. Come say hi. I'm going to start with an overview. So quickly, I'm just going to uh, chat about the what I'm going to go talk about later. So first up is the why. Like, what does this do? Why did I decide to make a, a generator in the first place? Then I'm going to uh, actually demo a couple of live examples so you can get a feel for the end result. And then I'll run through the file and folder organization and the component config and how it actually works. And then I'll wrap up with just going right into my ID and just showing some examples. I feel like that's probably the best way to show how some of this code is organized. So first up is an intro, the why and what does it do? So when I was first thinking about this, this XKCD comic came to mind pretty quickly. Like, you know, oh, I've got this great idea. You know, I don't like the way that other things do this, so I'm going to do it myself and create another competing standard. So I, I did do a lot of like soul searching and thinking through like, is this really worth it? Do I really want to put this out there in the world or put that effort towards, you know, helping somebody else build up their own? So I did obviously uh, end up deciding to, to do it. And here's two reasons why. First is, as I dove into WebC components, I was getting those familiar vibes of like component-based development that I typically get with a JavaScript framework like Vue or Svelte. After dozens of projects working in frameworks like this and this sort of like modular responsive design kind of setup, I knew that having a semi-automated way to document and test components in isolation is a huge help. So that was one big, big reason for it. And then second is, while I love the larger, more robust solutions like Storybook, Storybook is a big one that I've used a lot over the years, it can be a lot. And I build plenty of sites that don't need all that added complexity, just to have a place to itemize, document, and test components. Having something that is simpler and native to T just uh, felt like a, a better fit for projects like this. So moving on to features, um, what are the features of this generator? First up, it uh, visually itemizes JSON formatted design tokens, like colors, fonts, fluid scale, sizing, all that good stuff. I wanted to note that this isn't required, but if you're using tokens, it's, it'll automatically itemize those for you. It also itemizes components and their variations based on a simple configuration file format, and I'll get into more on how that works in a bit. And then it has a built-in WebC component support and some examples on how to actually build it with them. That's WebC is also not a strict requirement to make this work. It's just kind of the impetus behind why I built this in the first place. So it was the reason for it, but you don't need to use WebC to, to use this tool. You can still use Nunjex or whatever you're more comfortable with. And it also supports standalone documentation pages, which is perfect for just displaying you know, foundational HTML elements, things that are not like components, or uh, just documentation explaining the design system details in a more curated way. So demos, I actually put the demos right into this. This is a reveal.js uh, presentation. So I'm hoping that this works when I'm sharing my screen. So let me know if anything goes wrong. We're doing it live. So uh, first up is, this is the, the design system for my personal site. So you can see if I've got my, my site header there as well, but in the sidebar, I've got all the design systems. It, it itemizes all of the design tokens. So this is what I was talking about. It takes all the tokens that are in my JSON design tokens files and just kind of itemizes them out, shows what the colors are, shows what the fonts are, spacing, it'll, it'll give some examples of what that spacing looks like at this uh, screen size. So it's really nice to kind of visually see what some of these things will look like in, in context on the page. Text sizes, the steps, 
of the tech sizes that I have on my site. So that was that was pretty cool. I was really happy that I was able to figure that part out. Scroll up here. And then you can just click through component pieces as well. So alerts, the you know, basic alert card component, what, what those look like with no content, no headline, that kind of stuff. So that's one example. Another one, just to show you what it looks like from a, a different site with different colors, different fonts, pretty similar because I am a lazy developer and I have all the same components for this other site that I built somebody else. Turns out you can get pretty far with some text and card components, who knew? So yeah, I just wanted to show like this is a different version of it with obviously different color scheme and different font selection here, but all the components themselves are, are the same. So I didn't want to spend too much time there. All right, so let me go to the next slide. So how does it work? Um, now that we know the why behind it and generally what it offers and took a peek at what the end result looks like, let's get into how this actually works. So first up, file organization. All the design tokens are in the data directory under design tokens directory underneath that. I did that because I wanted to have all those JSON design tokens like available in, in files. And that's how I actually got it to build the, the itemized design tokens on that page is just by iterating through the data that comes through from these design token JSON files. For actually generating the tokens themselves, I love using Utopia. It's a utopia.fyi. If you've seen any of those tools, it's it's a really great way of, of kind of getting up to speed on like fluid typography, fluid spacing, things like that. It's really great. Again, design tokens aren't required, but they're supported. Next up, all of the components and their config go into includes slash components. As long as there is a accompanying .config.js file, it'll get picked up automatically when, when the site's being built. So that's the only additional requirement when you're building out a component is to have that config.js file. And then all the design system layouts are prefixed with the DS dash, and those are included in the, the standard layouts folder. And then the atomic elements that I mentioned, just a plain documentation for anything that's not component-based, that just goes into whatever the, the home folder is for the rest of the design system. And that's configurable, so you don't have to have it say design-system, you can have it be whatever subfolder you'd like. That's just what I, I put into the, the project to, to start it with. And then finally, there is a components.js data file, and that is what actually goes through all the configuration files and uh, generates the data for each of the components. So I mentioned component configuration being one of the only requirements. I wanted to just quickly go over some of that. So the only required field in a component configuration is the title. So you just give your component a title. The next one is the context. The context is an optional object that provides data to the component for illustrative purposes. So if your component is really just like a, a spot for, for content, this would be a good way of filling those spots so you can kind of preview what it looks like in, in the, the design system. And then after that is a preview. So that is a class that just gets added to the component container should one be needed. Most of the ones that I built have a wrapper and that is just constraining to like the, the width of a typical web page. So you can kind of get a, a sense for what it's gonna look like inside of a, a web page. And then finally, there is variants, which is a JavaScript array of objects for additional examples with their own title and context. So it's it's basically like variations of this component to show different different ways of, of using it. So moving on to how the component data is actually collected. This is just a, a copy of the components.js data file. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I thought it'd be nice to show just kind of a high level of a couple of the pieces in here. So the component data file gathers all the component config files. That's where that require glob part comes in, and it just finds anything that's .config.js. And then with that, it uses a reducer that then returns that formatted component detail with all the nested variants defined. 
So it's basically working up what is the tree structure of the page for the, the, the design system, that sidebar that I had showed in the demo. So for example, the card, it would show the card and then all the variants would be sub items under that. Great, so let's jump over. Oh wait, actually, did I have some more? No, okay, let's go over to the IDE. Well, I'm going pretty quick now, aren't I? Okay, so let me jump over to my IDE and show how I pulled all this together. All right. Okay, so first I wanted to show how the itemized tokens work. So I had mentioned that the, the data is in JSON files. That, that JSON file, it, it's just 11D by itself pulling all that data together for use in templates. So this part actually was a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be initially. So I just grabbed any colors that are in design tokens. I've got a couple helper classes that I put in there to make the color itself, the background of, of the box. And that's all there is really to it. It slugifies the name to, to put it on top. This is really helpful for when you're actually working on a site, you can quickly copy the variable. Let me go over here and show you what the design token page looks like. I've used this a lot when I was building out my site. I was like, oh yeah, what was the, the token name for that primary color? Oh, great. Highlight, copy, paste, move on. So it was really nice to have that kind of itemized and, and easy to, to see while I'm working on it. Same thing for the fonts. It'll just find all the, the fonts, itemize them out in a list for you. So as you change your fonts, actually, I should probably have those files open too so you can see what that looks like. Design tokens, colors. So it's really just a JavaScript object with the name and the value for all the different colors involved. Pretty simple. Same thing for the fonts. JavaScript object. I added a bit of a description to just remind myself, what is this font even here for? And it'll put that in there too. So name, description, what's the actual font families, and then give me the variable again so I can use that again in my, my CSS. And then spacing, same thing for, for that as well. I, I use just a, a colored in box so I can kind of see how that looks for the, the size of the screen that I'm working with now. I'm using a lot of fluid typography, fluid spacing lately. And sometimes I can confuse myself on how, how big and how small that gets. So it's kind of nice to see just a square of this is what this will look like at this size. So when I do the browser resizing, you can kind of see how it you know sizes up and down. So it, it's helpful for visually getting a sense for that. So that is the, the tokens file. If there's any additional ones that you add, you can just keep adding to this file and it'll generate those for you as well. Okay, moving on to the actual pages. How are these pages being generated? So let me close this and this. I have a components pages and a components full pages. These are Nunchuck's templates that are just in the, let me close. This is really big, so I can't see a lot. Here we go. So in the design system folder under source, I have these two files, component pages and components full pages. And I had to do two separate ones because there is the component page itself, like the card component. But then I want to actually have an isolated version of that card component separate so I can see that full screen by itself without all the extra stuff around it. So that's what these two are doing. The, the page is actually creating the page with the tabs so I can tab through and see what, what's the HTML, what's the context in my config. But I can also then open up a full screen version of just the component itself to get an isolated view of that. And that is what's in the demo here too. It's just a iframe of that component. So I don't know if you can see it in the, the screen share, but down here, I have that component frame where I can kind of resize it and view it uh, within the page as well. So this is just an iframe that's resizable, essentially. So inside the iframe is the full page. Page itself is components pages. That's those two. And then I wanted to also quickly go over what static content looks like. I mean, we've all worked with 11D before. I just wanted to show where that is in the context of the rest of the, the uh, stuff that I've been talking about. So if you put any other files within design system or any subfolder inside of that, 
it'll get documented as part of the, the sidebar navigation. So I have a bunch of other elements that I've put into blocks, form, inline, and pre-formatted. And you see those, those get lined up right underneath the, the design tokens. So for blocks, I just have like block elements, headlines, paragraphs, depth utilities, all the standard things that you would need, tables, summary list, uh, form elements, inline elements. There's, it's just documenting all the HTML uh, fields. So just making sure that I'm accounting for all the things that are going to be used or potentially might not be used, but I just don't want to have something broken. So that's what those are, are there for. So next, I wanted to go through a, a few actual component examples. So I want to show first uh, a full just web component example. And I want to pull up the sidebar for that to, to show that off. So if I go into includes components, and I go into compositions and sidebar, here is my sidebar component. This is actually using the sidebar component that came from every layout. If you've heard of that, it's a, it's a project. Actually, I can just pull it up real quick. Every layout. Yeah, so there's a few free ones that they provide here, and one is the sidebar. I really love this whole thing. If you take a peek at this and, and read through some of the free ones and, and really like it, I really suggest just buying it all because it's it's full of gold. <laughs> so for the, the sidebar, this is actually pulling the sidebar web component from this project. So that's what the sidebar.js file is. This is, oh, let me close this so you can see. This is really just the HTML element that comes from them. So what I'm doing here is loading that and some sidebar.css, just base CSS, into a web component by linking them both in there. So linking the sidebar CSS, the sidebar JavaScript uh, web component file, and that creates this sidebar-l web component that I can use elsewhere. I'm actually using that to build the, the site itself. So the sidebar in my page here is actually using that sidebar web component. Sorry, I feel like I'm going really quickly. I just want to make sure. Does that all make sense? Can I get a thumbs up or yay? Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So that is an example of actually pulling in a web component from somewhere else. I haven't done a lot of like in-depth web component work. I think the the content that Benny had shared that's really making me think like maybe I should try to, you know, throw more rocks at this and make sure that this is usable for things that are more complicated than, you know, something that just adds a sidebar to a page. So that's something that I'll, I'll try to put more time into soon. So that's a uh, full web component. I also wanted to show what a WebC HTML only component example looks like. And for that, I, I'm going to open up the card component. So the card component is just this WebC. It's got a few slots, a few named slots for um, the image, the content, and you can see I've got image listed here several times. And I did that because as you probably have had uh, in the past, you, you know, when you have a card component, sometimes you want the image at the top, sometimes you need it at the bottom, sometimes you don't want the image at all. So I wanted to give some flexibility on where that actually lines up with the, the rest of the content. Then I set up my configuration file. Let me close this again so you can see this a little bit better. So this was actually what I was showing in my presentation earlier. This is the, the card component, so that's the title. The context for the, the first version of it is right here, right at the top. And then I've got several variants where I show photo first instead of headline first, or the photo last, or no photo, or no content, or even no headline. So I've got variations that show when some of these things are not available or, if, or when they need to be moved around. So when all this is pulled together, I'll show this again here. So we've got the card component, headline first, contents down here, and this is the image. And then if I go to no content, no headline, no photo, these variations are being powered by the objects that are inside of the variance array. So that's how you get these kind of sub pages to show different versions of the card component. And then finally, I wanted to show something that's not WebC based. So here's a, a really small example that I put in here for quotes. So it's just a Nunchuck file that pulls in whatever data that, that you give it. 
And as long as you give it a config.js file, it'll work. So this is providing the, the, the context for that nunchucks file as well. So you can see body and citation, you know, the citation and, and the body. And that looks like this. So WebC is definitely the, the impetus behind this project, but it's it's not a hard and fast rule or requirement to, to use it. And I think that's all I had. Yeah, okay. So let me go back to my presentation. I just wanted to take a minute to also just extend a thank you to a lot of different other projects and uh, people that put a lot of great work out there uh, without whom this would not exist. Obviously, 11T and WebC, I love using Utopia for the fluid type space and grid systems generated. Design tokens are based on the Build Excellent Websites website. I also took some of the CSS structure based on Cube CSS. I really love how that organizes CSS. You can see more of that if you, you know, download the project and, and look at the CSS structure. The self-documented design system was inspired by one by Tris Mudford. Uh, I added the support for for WebC and for design tokens, but that was really the the project that really got the gear spinning. And then once I heard about WebC, it all just kind of came together for me. And then finally, some of the base styling uh, is based on some of uh, small CSS and every layout. I really encourage you to to look at those projects. And yeah, I think that was all I had for that. I've got some links here for more reading. I'm gonna, I think, just export this to PDF or maybe put it up on my site somewhere so that you can go through and, and get all these links to share the GitHub source, obviously, to, to look at this and, and possibly use it on a project. Check out some demo sites. The announcements on my blog go into some of the details that I just talked about here as well. And that's it. You can find me on social on these platforms. Awesome.